of the leave-taking of Christmas, celebrating the incarnation and nativity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The incarnation refers to that which is within the womb of Mary, a child that develops like any one of us. We are first conceived in the womb and we develop slowly over nine months and then we are born our nativity so the nativity of christ is not only a celebration of god coming into the world but of god becoming like his creation becoming like man being born like a man and living on this earth like a man and a woman time of Christ's birth was a time of great turmoil. It was a time of poverty for the people of Israel. It was a time of slavery. It was a time of subjugation. Yes, Nicholas. It was a time when great fear covered the face of the earth. Fear from leaders, fear from armies, fear from neighbors, fear of life itself, fear of death itself. Fear is one of the great mysteries of humanity. Very often we do not know where it comes from. All of a sudden we have a feeling of fear, of foreboding, within our own self. We may walk into a dark room and be afraid. We may walk into a lit room and be afraid. We may turn from left to right, back and forth, behind us, in front of us, fearing something that we do not see, something that we only sense, and sometimes our senses are not correct. Fear can lead us to do many things that normally we would not do. The time of Christ's birth of the Lord God coming into the world, a fulfilling prophecy from the Old Testament. Fulfilling the prophecies of the Old Testament. It is what Jesus Christ taught his disciples on the road to Mamau after his resurrection. It is what they, he taught them daily about the fulfillment of the prophecies for the coming of a Messiah. And Christ is that Messiah. But the fulfilling of the prophecies and the coming of a Messiah also meant there was a great king to come. There was someone who was going to conquer. Someone who was going to make right that which was wrong. To fulfill that which had been empty. King Herod hears of this. He knows of the scriptures. He is well read of the Old Testament prophecies. And he is those of his court who teach him and remind him of the fulfillment of the prophecies. Three wise men appear. They come from a great distance from the east. They bear gifts for a Messiah, for a savior. And they only know of this Savior because of what they have been received either through prayer or through reading or even looking at the stars. They know that there is a great Savior to come. The scriptures tell us they come from the east and the icon of the nativity shows them in the far left upper corner arriving to the place where Christ would be born. And they bear gifts of frankincense, gold, and myrrh. They fear nothing. They have seen the fulfillment of the prophecies come to be. But Herod the king fears this new Messiah, this new king. And so something very terrible happens because of his fear. He has over 14,000 male children under the age of two killed, slaughtered 
throughout the region, in Bethlehem, in Jerusalem, throughout the whole area, 14,000 young babies killed because of his fear. Fear makes us do many things that normally we would not do. My first trip to the Holy Lands, we went to the Church of the Nativity. And on the southern outside wall, there were excavations taking place. And Bishop Nikiforos and those who were with us brought us into a place where they had excavated bones, tiny bones. Thousands of bones that had been buried under the church of the Nativity. They were believed to be the bones of those children who had been killed because of fear. Fear of a Messiah who would take over. Fear of a king who would rent asunder all those who had ruled. But that was not the kingdom that our Lord brought. And that is not a kind of salvation that he wished for humankind. His salvation and his kingdom was an eternal kingdom and an eternal salvation. It was infinite, it was not finite. In the scriptures we hear the word fear used very often. Angels would come, the angels came to the shepherds. They told them, do not be afraid. The angel came to the Virgin Mary, the angel Gabriel to tell her that she would bear a son. Do not fear, do not be afraid. The angel came to Joseph, who was given the responsibility to take care of the Virgin Mother. The angel told him in a dream, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And that is what the Lord God tells us daily. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I have come to offer salvation to mankind. Do not be afraid. For the power of evil has been dispelled. Do not be afraid. For those who wish to do evil, even though they may succeed initially, they will not succeed eternally. Fear oftentimes makes people do things they would not do normally. But fear can also be something that is good. When we come forward for Holy Communion, the priest says, with the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near. With the fear of God, mentioned so many times in the petitions of the liturgy. With the fear of God, the Psalms also speak about that same kind of fear. That kind of fear is not to be afraid of God, but to have awe of who he is and what he has done to create us, does that not make us all? For that very act of creation is something that we try to duplicate, but we cannot replicate. We cannot do what God has done. We can only take that which has been made and reform it. We cannot make something out of nothing. And that is what God, the Creator, has done in our world. He has taken nothing and he has created this world that we live in and he has created each and every one of us from the time that we were conceived in our womb to the time that we were born. May this be a time that we give great thought to the great miracle of Christ's incarnation and birth coming into the world that is not much different than the world in which he initially was born into. Because the world still has fear. And fear very often makes people do things they normally would not do. But God is great in our life, and he has dispelled that fear. And we have nothing to fear. We only have the love of God to guide us and protect us and to strengthen us. May this time that we celebrate his nativity be a time of joy 
of festal gatherings, of glorification, of sanctification, and of recommitment to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A blessed Christmas to all, and a healthy and prosperous new year for all of us in the year coming. Amen. Please stand.